Hey, what's up everybody? Today I'm going to be talking about the Dolly Rubicor 6. These run about $8,000 per pair and they were loaned to me by a viewer. So shout out to that viewer who loaned these to me. This design is a two and a half plus halfway, which is unique. It's the first time I think I've run into this designation, but really what this means is that the two bottom woofers overlap up to about 800 hertz. Then the bottom woofer rolls off. The top woofer plays on to about 2600 hertz where the tweeter comes in. And then the super tweeter comes in at 14 kilohertz. The speaker comes in a number of colors that you see here. Personally, I like the one that I was loaned in this maroon color. But you've also got this cherry finish, which I, I really like, or maybe called a walnut finish, but I really like these two finishes. And then of course you've got the pretty standard gloss black and gloss white. And this is what the back of the speaker looks like. So you see you've got a port about midway and a little bit closer to the ground and it is bi-ampable and it does come with a grill. Pros for the speaker are, Nice bass extension down to about 40, 45 hertz in the room. Very nice and robust. High frequency has a lot of sizzle or pop, if you want to call it that, but that's more so because the level of the tweeter stands out more above the mid range. And that rolls kind of into a con where to me, the speaker sounds a little bit too uh, laid back, if you will, in the mid range. And in particular, what I wound up doing was I took EQ, put it to about two and a half kilohertz, bumped it up about two decibels with a Q of 0 0.5. So a really wide Q. And when I did that, what it did was it brought the mids out of the mix. For the most part, what I found was that the mids were just too recessed on everything I listened to and even watching television. So personally speaking, I would prefer for that mid range to have a little bit more energy. And having said that, this is much more noticeable when the speaker is pointed directly at you on axis. The manufacturer's spec says to turn them off axis, basically lined up with the wall parallel behind it. So point them directly out into the room. And you'll notice a pretty big difference when you do that, specifically in the top end. The distortion on this speaker is quite low and the harmonic distortion is really cool because the third harmonic distortion level is like way, way lower than the second harmonic. Overall, it's a pretty good sounding speaker, but for me, it just runs too hot in the treble. Otherwise, I could recommend it, but without some equalization or some sidewall absorption, it's kind of a tough sell for me personally. Now what I'd like to do is give you a couple sound clip demos. So I'm gonna start off with the speaker in an anechoic response fashion, which is gonna be what you would hear if you're listening in the near field or you're listening to a room where there are no sidewall reflections. This gives you a general idea of the tonal character of the speaker. Then I'm gonna see what happens when you turn the speaker 30 degrees away from you, and you'll notice that the top end drops down a level some. Now I'm gonna do this using pink noise because with pink noise, it's very evident. If I choose certain tracks, sometimes it may or may not highlight the differences that you'll see and would actually hear maybe with other tracks. So for this video, I'm gonna stick with just pink noise and we'll see how well this translates to your ears. And just for a quick visual, when I say on versus off axis, this is what I mean, okay? All right, let's go. All right, so the first clip you heard was directly on axis, and that's what this looks like. And you can see that the high frequency is definitely lifted more above the mid-range by as much as three to maybe even five decibels, particularly in this four kilohertz area. That's gonna sound very sibilant to your ears. And so do not aim the speaker directly facing you. Instead, if you aim it 30 degrees off axis, you're gonna have a more linear sound overall. It's gonna be slightly scooped out in the mid-range, but not as severely as it was before relative to the high frequency area. But then the downside to that is you are gonna experience more higher frequency roll off at a higher rate above about 10 kilohertz or so. The F3 is at 42 hertz, the F10 is at 30 hertz, average sensitivity is around 86 decibels. Now we've got the CEA 2034 data set. Again, the on-axis response shows a scoop through the mid range compared to the high frequency response where there's a peak of about four to five decibels at around 4K and then it kind of flattens out, but it's still high in level about plus maybe two to three decibels compared to the average mid range. If we look down here at the early reflections directivity, we can see that there's not a big jump between the mid woofer and the tweeter level, but there is a little bit of one, but this is probably chalked up to the vertical separation between the tweeter and the mid woofer. 
So I wouldn't be too worried about that. And overall, I would say that the ability to EQ this speaker, if you wanted to bring this down and not have anything kind of work against you in that regard, you could still do that because the directivity is pretty good in this particular region. Something else you could also try is if we look at the original response, we can see there's a high Q resonance at around 590, and then the tweeter level is a little bit too high. So if you have access to something like the WIM or a mini DSP or some other source for manual equalization, then you can go in and you can try some of these bands I set up here, 3000 Hertz minus 3 dB for a high shelf. Doing that and then a peak at 4000 and then 590 and bringing those down, some amount like you see here will give you this response. So it's a more linear on axis. And I think that'll give you a more natural in-room response. So like I said, if you have equalization, you want to give this a shot. Uh, let me know what you get and what you think. And I'm going to switch over to how I heard it in my room, which when listening to music in-room extensions to about 45 hertz, vocal sounded recessed. There is sharp sibilance and a lack of high frequency energy turned off axis. Burst Decay shows a resonance at about 800 hertz. Horizontal contour plot gives us an idea of the overall radiation of the speaker. Is it going to be narrow or wide? And this helps us have a better appreciation for what's it going to do to the imaging of the sound stage. The sound, yeah, what's it going to do to the imaging of the sound stage when you actually put the speaker into a room? So a wider speaker is going to have more reflections in a reflective environment, and therefore it can make the imaging a little bit more diffuse within the sound stage as opposed to a speaker that has a more narrow radiation. And this particular speaker radiates at about plus or minus 75 degrees to the mid range. I would personally say this is on the wider side of things. It's probably pretty close to where I like. Generally, I find I like a speaker that's about 60 or 70 degrees plus or minus horizontal radiation. Vertically, you need to be positioned probably at the tweeter level. I do not recommend you positioning your ears at the super tweeter level. And, and I know it seems counter uh, counterintuitive, but my results seem to indicate that ears at the tweeter level is the best way to go. Harmonic distortion at 86 decibels. Notice the gap between the second order and third order distortion, and now at 96 decibels, notice this gap. There is some really good engineering going on with these six and a half inch midwoofers. This gap is very, very impressive. Multi-tone distortion shows us a speaker that can get pretty loud without a lot of issue. Again, if we look at 3% distortion threshold, we can see that this speaker is pretty much within that, even at the highest output volume for full range. Now, what if you use a subwoofer and cross this guy over around 80 hertz, this is what you get. So you reduce some of the mid-range distortion, but overall, there's not a huge difference here. What about dynamic range and linearity at different output volumes? Well, this is what we got here, and this looks really good. There's more give up and more loss of dynamic range below about 80, maybe 90 hertz, 100 hertz or so in this region at the highest output volume of 102 decibels, which equates to about 26 decibels of dynamic range going from 70 to 102 decibels at one meter anechoic. So to summarize things from my perspective, this is a very good looking speaker, very low distortion and good dynamic range. The linearity, at least to me, could be worked on. And I think that tweeter just needs to be padded down about three decibels or so. Doing that would probably open up the speaker to a much more accurate sound. And since it's biampable, and I didn't try it, I just now thought about it actually, you might be able to get away with using two separate amplifiers on this thing and essentially kind of running it quasi-active where you just pad down the level for that tweeter and super tweeter. That might, that might could work. It's just an idea. I also do recommend that when you set these speakers up, I, I found that putting them about a foot off the wall behind the speaker, like so have it about a foot of space between the wall and the speaker or a third meter, actually worked really well. And it maybe have worked that way because it maybe it helped to fill in that mid-range dip a little bit and make it not sound so forward. Now, I said earlier that when I was using equalization that I brought around 2.5K up with a wide Q, and doing that really did help to bring the vocals more forward and not necessarily forward of the mix, but kind of brought it back out of the mix because as the speaker sits in its natural state, the tweeter level being about 3 decibels higher or maybe even a little bit more than that tends to cause the mid-range to sound more recessed or Vice versa, you could hear the speaker as laid back, where I tended to hear it as a little bit more forward sounding. I also do recommend you use sidewall absorption for this speaker. Even though the tweeter level itself is probably really the problem, using some sidewall absorption is going to help pad down that four to five kilohertz area, depending on 
you know, where you line that sidewall absorption up and also make sure to point the speakers facing directly out into the room. I do not, do not recommend pointing these speakers directly at your ears. Do you need a subwoofer for the speaker? Uh, generally, I say if the speaker gets down to about 40 hertz from most music, you're probably okay. Uh, this one gets down to around the mid 40s or so in room, so you might be all right. In this case, I would say give the speaker a shot before you go buy a subwoofer. Don't buy a subwoofer first thinking that you're going to have to have it. And that does it for this review. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, leave them in the comment section below and I'll try to answer. It's the holidays. I may not get around to it. If you'd like to support what I'm doing, you can actually do so one of three ways. I forgot about one of them. Uh, you can buy a t-shirt, merch, stuff like that. I'll have a link in the description below. You can also join me at patreon.com and you can get behind the scenes info and updates and things like that that I don't share publicly. Alternatively, you can use any of my generic affiliate links, and they are below in the description. So if you want to order anything from Amazon, Crutchfield, Best Buy, Target, Walmart, whatever, uh, you just click on one of those links and go buy whatever it is you want. So let's say you want to buy a new TV from Walmart.com, click that link, go to Walmart.com. You want to buy new speakers from Crutchfield, I don't care what they are. I don't, it's, it doesn't matter to me, or a new turntable or whatever. Go to Crutchfield.com via that generic affiliate link, and that will earn me a small commission at no additional cost to you. I appreciate it. Hope you all have a good one. Take care.